From the heartland of America to every nation on Earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. Thank you again for tuning in the program, wherever you might be watching it. There are so very, very many different types of places. Somebody the other day said, I was in a bar, and he turned on your program, and he said, be quiet, everybody. I want to hear this. So no matter where you're watching the program, I trust that the Lord will take it and use it in your heart. But uh, we have a very, very important one for you today. And it, uh, the first headline that, have I, that I have is concerning our new president. The new president warns companies about their jobs. All right? Well, we all know that he said he wants to make America great again. So you keep those jobs in the United States, not shipping them out somewhere. We'll deal with that in a moment. And then migrant stabs Christian woman. Why? Because she was reading the Bible. Can you believe it? Just reading the Bible. That was a migrant. Then going on, Fatah threatens bloodshed if Trump transfers the embassy to Jerusalem. Well, you know, he said he's going to. And he told Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, just wait till I get into office. Things are going to turn around. So we're going to keep our eye on that. I believe he'll keep his word. And uh, we'll discuss that in a moment, too. But I want to just say, before I introduce our guest for today, uh, Jack is so anxious to come back. But I was telling our crew just before we started this program, right where he's at, he's a minister, believe me. He's shedding uh, so much light on so many people's lives with the Word of God as we give it out. And everybody seems to be grasping. Uh, we were walking, I was wheeling him back to his room after lunch one day, and one of the gentlemen who getting his exercises out there in the hallway said, Rexella? I said, yes. He said, when's the world going to end? <laughs> I said, it's not. He said, what do you mean? I said, no, it's not. Jesus is coming back. Okay. And he said, what do you mean by that? He said, I said, everything that Jesus said would happen just before he comes back is happening now. And one of the ladies listening was a Hindu lady, a beautiful, sweet lady. Every person up there knows who Jack Van Impey is and my they are reaching out in so many, many, many areas. So keep him in your prayers. He's anxious to get back, but he's ministering right where he's at. I'd like to welcome as our guest today, Dr. David Williams. Now he served as pastor of Mount Hope Church in Lansing, Michigan for more than 30 years. And in that time, thousands of ministers were trained through the Mount Hope Training Institute. First of all, it's something that he was there for 30 years. That's unheard of. But we'll go on here. During his tenure, they launched 43 new Mount Hope churches in the United States. But that's not all. Over 300 in West Africa, South Africa, Zimbabwe, and 200 in Asia, with a combined membership exceeding, this will bless your heart, 100,000. 100,000 people. During his 30 years as pastor of Mount Hope Church, they gave over 40 million dollars to world missions. And I just want to say, oh, Dr. Williams, thank you so much for being our guest today, and praise the Lord for what you accomplished there. Well, thank you, Rexella. It's a joy and an honor to be with you, but I want to say I'm not the one that really planted those churches. I trained the leaders and sent them out, and they did amazing things and just multiplied. And that's what God said. Jesus said, herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Amen. And uh, that means productivity. Amen. Absolutely. Well, it's great that God laid it on his heart to do it. God laid it on your heart to do it, Dr. Williams. If you hadn't listened and promoted it, it probably would not have happened. But you gave 40 million dollars to promote it. Well, 
uh, and you and your husband helped. Oh, Remember <laughs> our Bible Training Institute? Yes. Some of those very people that you laid hands on and prayed for when uh, you and Dr. Jack came down and, and yes. ministered at our Bible Training Institute, they've gone on and are in the ministry now and multiplying the Lord's work on the earth. Amen. We're grateful. Amen. We're going to get into, friends, some very, very important headlines. Were you ever excited like you are now about what's happening in the world? Oh, I, I, not only is my husband excited, but my heart just pounds sometimes when I read some of these headlines. So much is happening. Well, the closeness of our president with, of course, uh, Putin is all over the page. Take a look, this week magazine. Bear hug, Trump's refusal to believe Putin hacked the Democrats. Well, there's so much more to that. You know, our president, I just want to say something here. Our president has been very close to Netanyahu. He's a friend to Netanyahu, and he said, wait till I get in, and then things are going to turn around. Now, of course, Putin is not a friend of Netanyahu. He's very much against Israel. So how that's going to work out. I'm going to insert something here before I go to Dr. Williams on this subject. Something that Jack had to say about what's going to develop. Now, first of all, Israel had to be a nation before any of this could happen. So he'll start there. But take a, a look, please, at what he had to say. In Ezekiel's chapters 38 and 39. Now, I said the prophecy was meaningless until it was in Israel. Why? Because the invasion is of Israel, and they were not in their homeland for 1,900 years. So listen to this. Let's prove that Israel came back in 1948. In Ezekiel chapter 38, Verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice in 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, 29, 18 times there's an Israel. And they raised the six-pointed star of David, and they captured Jerusalem, Joel 3, verse 2, and they're supposed to have it in their possession when Armageddon takes place. This is a miracle, so listen carefully. Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39, verse 1 of Ezekiel 38. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against them. Gog is the end-time ruler, and it could be Putin of Russia, because the word chief there is translated Russia or Russia in the Word of God today. And not only is it Russia, but they are in charge of Meshach and Tubal. Meshach is Moscow, Tubal is Tobolsk, southwest of Siberia. And then they come down from the east and north, Russia from the north, China from the east with North Korea and the rest. It's all right there how this man knew what God was telling him to write. And they have all these other places. They're fighting over Syria. Isaiah 17, that becomes a heap of rubble. There is Persia in Ezekiel 38, 5. That's Iran and Iraq. Changed their name from that to uh, Persia in 1932 or to Iran and Iraq from Persia then. Then we find also Tagarma, that's Turkey. Now, when they come from the east and the north, they come across the dry ground where the Euphrates River was. How is that possible? Turkey now has the Alatolia project, which turns off the water with a press of a few buttons, and they can come across on dry land. Every single thing he said, I could go on and give it other names. It's all here, ladies and gentlemen. This is it. And when it happens, we're gone. And now you can understand what Jesus meant when he said, you will know when it's near, even at the door. But there must be an Israel and in charge of Jerusalem. And that's it. You see why I said to the gentleman who asked about the Lord's coming and everything is forming? Because it is. The Lord is ready to come back. But I believe we have an extension of time now that we need to take advantage of. And talking about Putin, you know, he can put on a front. 
He can say that he's a friend of Israel all he wants to, but we know the Bible will be fulfilled one day. Is that not right, Doctor? Exactly right. And your husband talked about this for years. I, I found a little booklet that I had in my library called Your Startling Future. Uh -huh. And all these things were in it, Rexella. Uh, Dr. Jack talked about Russia. And, and we know that Russia is the one that's going to head up this Ezekiel 38 and 39 coalition because just what doctor said, and they settled to the north of the Caucasus Mountains and, yes. the, and the Black Sea. It couldn't be Turkey, although Turkey will be involved. Yes. And so things are getting exciting. All the end time markers that we would expect to see just before Jesus comes for his people are now in active play. You know, it's something that really impressed me that Jack said that Damascus will become a heap of rubble. Well, think of what's happening in Syria. It's exactly fulfilled. Isaiah 17, 1. And uh, Israel did an attack on Damascus just recently, and it wiped out some ammunition dumps. But the prophecy says yes. Damascus is going to be leveled. Yes, absolutely. I'll tell you, the Lord's word will come true. And thank the Lord. I love the, the end of that is that the Lord is coming back and Amen. we all need to be prepared. Well, our president, uh, he wants to make America great. And one of the things at the top of his agenda would have to be the economy. Take a look at what he's saying from the Wall Street Journal. Trump warns companies on jobs. Ford adding 700 jobs, 700 million, whoa, in Michigan. Thank the Lord. Automakers see ally in Trump. And then Spirit's chairman seeks Trump's favor. Again, Trump, soft bank to invest 50, what, billion in the USA. And Carrier alters Mexico plan, keeps some jobs in Indiana. Thank the Lord, this is just really coming along. And Trump salutes Carrier and himself. Okay, he had something to do with that, I'm sure, for saving jobs. Now, we all know that also $1 billion uh, was just invested by General Motors. My, they say we're going to keep uh, the, uh, our jobs here also. We want them here. So they've invested a billion dollars for manufacturing new products. How wonderful. It looks like he's going to fulfill what he had to say about keeping our jobs here in the United States. And that means more jobs for everybody. And now, the Bible is very clear, isn't it, Dr. Williams, about what's happening? I, I believe it is because um, I, I was listening to an economist just yesterday who said we can't understand why this economy has not crashed yet because all the markers that brought on every crash in the past are there but it's not falling apart. Now we have 94 million people out of work in America and Trump is saying now God is not against international trade. He wants international trade. Solomon traded with other nations. Yes. But what our president wants is to keep the jobs in America, and uh, and uh, he's not against international trade. Just keep the jobs here. Absolutely, and I think that God's directing him in the right direction. You know that our people, that we're going to many of our people here are in poverty. Oh yeah. We don't even talk about it, but they are. And we need to, those jobs here. We're not trying to deprive any, anybody of uh, help. We want to help other countries. We should help other countries, but not deprive our own people of jobs here. That's what you're trying to stress right there, isn't it, Doctor? Yes, and I'm trying to say that it takes leadership. Somebody that can be courageous, somebody that can stand up to bullies, somebody that can express vision for this nation. And I think that's why so many people got behind our president during the election is because he was expressing a vision yeah. that we, quite frankly, haven't had. I love his slogan too, make America great again, don't you? Amen. I really, really did. Now, friends, if ever I wanted you to have one of our wonderful, wonderful uh, pr promos, it is the Eternity video. Oh, who, where, when, and why? We're all going there. So we need to know what's out there and how we will land in the right place. Take a look, please, at the promo. Eternity. 
Who, Where, When, Why is the most astounding biblical video study ever produced by doctors Jack and Rexella Van Epi. Out of hundreds of predictions prophesied, the greatest and final sign is about to happen when Christ returns as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The event is about to happen, even at the door. Could it occur in 2017 or 18? Be ready. Why? Eternity is forever. Here are seven of the numerous questions answered on this video. One, which of the world's religions is the only one that can get you to heaven? Two, what do most people today believe about heaven and hell? Three, what form did Jesus have before he came to earth, spirit or bodily? Four, what is the rapture? And what will happen to our bodies at the time of the rapture? Five, how could the Old Testament saints get to heaven if Christ's blood had not yet been shed? Six, how can we be saved from death, the grave, and assured of heaven? Seven, could Jesus return in our generation? Order this all-important video today. Oh, yes, there's the 800 number, and there's the phone number. Please, oh, please make the call or write to us. We'll be happy to get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Eternity is real. We need to be facing it and where we will spend eternity. It's good to know that we can go directly to heaven, and we'll show you how on this video. So get a couple of them. Give it to a neighbor. You know, friends, I want to just emphasize the next headline I'm going to show you. I did uh, show you this headline a week or so ago, but my heart is so burdened for it. I'd like for you to take a look, please, again at it. 90,000 Christians killed for their faith in 2016. Now, Christians are the most persecuted religious group in the world, and the numbers are growing. They're staggering, friends. And then... Huh. Christian woman in China sentenced to three years in prison for holding a Bible study. Are you kidding? A migrant stabs Christian woman because she was reading her Bible. Now that's in Afghanistan. Egypt arrests three more suspects in Cairo. Church attack. Well, you know, I tell you, it's growing around the world, and ISIS singles out Dallas mega church in call for arson jihad. My, oh my. You know, a friend of ours is the pastor of that church. My, oh my, how we need to be praying. They're calling for arson down there. In fact, they have had to hire brand new guards, more guards, because of these threats. And I want to go to Dr. Williams right now. I know how Jack Van Ippie feels about this. It's going to increase just before the coming of the Lord because the world hates Christianity. But do you believe that, Doctor? Well, Jesus said that. He said that there would, this would be the beginning of sorrows. You'd be afflicted. You'd be uh, taken up and put in prisons and brought before councils and all. And he said, these are the beginning of sorrows. In other words, when they increase, we're seeing the signs of Christ's coming and the final Shabuah, the final seven years. You know, it was the child of the flesh that persecuted the child of promise, we're told in Galatians. And Paul said, all who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, but your heart goes out to them. You know, uh, birth pains, the, when they get closer, when they, they become more frequent and more intense, you know the baby's going to be born. That's right. And that's what Jesus described. When my wife was getting ready to have our daughter, I was preaching in church, and the ladies were back there pointing to their watch and pointing to Mary Jo's belly, pointing to their watch, Mary Jo's belly. They were getting closer. The, the contractions were becoming more intense. And sure enough, when I did get her to the hospital, they said, Mr. Williams, you didn't get her here any too soon. And so the baby was born. And there's something about to be born. We're going to go through, a, I mean, we're not going to go through a seven-year tribulation, but there's a seven-year period known as Daniel's 70th week, the final Shabuah of world human government, but before that, something dramatic, global, and irreversible is going to take place. And you talk about it on your video. Yes. And that's when Jesus comes for his people. Amen.
And you know, there's something that went through my mind the other day. A lady approached me, boy, Rexel, how can you, how can you seem happy or at peace in such a troublesome time? And I thought, you know, God's love, God's perfect love casteth out fear. How true it is. If you have him in your heart, you're not going to be afraid of the future because he holds it in his hand. The Lord holds the future in his hand. Well, so much is being said about our new president right now, especially moving, you know, the embassy and so forth, and even the resolution they gave in the United Nations. Fatah threatens bloodshed if Trump moves the embassy, I'm going to go very quickly here, Abbas warns against moving U.S. embassy to Jerusalem. Jerusalem terrorists reportedly angered by plan to move U.S. embassy. Hamas praises Jerusalem oh, truck attack. Well, you know what? He just ran into people there. A horrific thing. And then four killed, 16 injured in Jerusalem truck ramming terror attack. And then, okay, here we go. Netanyahu says truck ramming is a new type of attack. Now, we can't expect that, too that Israel is going to be persecuted along with the Christians just prior to the coming of the Lord. And the only one that can stop all of what's going on that's bad in this world is the coming of the Lord. Is that not right, Dr. Wayne? That's exactly right, Rexella. And, you know, these people that are saying, that, like Hamas, saying we're just praising those that are doing these terrorist attacks, Isaiah 520 says, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. And that's exactly what they're doing. As it relates to Jerusalem capital, 33 years David led out of Jerusalem, King David. And then for 400 years it was in his dynasty. And we saw last week when Dr. Baugh was with you, the, the actual deed that David was the, the deed holder to the whole city of Jerusalem, that it is a Jewish nation. And I think a lot of the problem comes actually through this replacement theology that the church has replaced yeah. Israel, which is a total heresy. 20 times in the book of Acts, we see Israel and uh, the church separate entities. And when Jesus returns to this earth in his second coming, he's not coming to New York. He's not coming to Washington, no. D.C. He's not coming to London. He's not coming to Paris. He is coming to rule and reign out of Jerusalem. Amen and amen. And I want to quickly add a, one more, a couple more headlines here very, very quickly. I'm so burdened about the United Resolution that the United Nations gave. Senate leaders back resolution on UN's anti-Israel resolution. Well, now look what they did. Take a look at this next one. U.S. House passes motion repudiating United Nations resolution on Israel. Amen and amen. The United States needs to stand up, stand up for Israel. Right, doctor? I believe that. Uh, Israel and the United States are the only two countries in the entire world whose constitution, all founding documents, were based on God's word. We have ties with Israel. And God said, I will contend with those nations that contend with Israel. And you know, Rexella, the United Nations has had 77 resolutions against Israel and only one addressing the Palestinians. Oh, yes, yes. And you know, a couple weeks ago, I said also, uh, they've not addressed the fact that Christians are being persecuted they're not trying to do anything to protect, protect Christians around the world. Why don't they give a resolution about that? Did you think about that, Dr. Williams? I did think about that, Rexella. And I really know this. I know that if we bless Israel, we're going to be blessed. Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. And so I say, how do these 70 nations that gathered together in Paris, how can they make a resolution or come up with a situation when the Palestinians weren't there and the Israelis weren't invited, it would be like somebody trying to make a decision for the United States without even our involvement. Well, you know, I truly believe that God has a special love for Israel. And of course, that's where he chose for his son to be born in Israel. And you know what? God has a special love for you. 
He wants to be your Savior. Oh, how the Lord loves you. I'll never forget when I bowed my my heart, my head, and said, Oh, Lord, come into my heart. Be my Savior. Age 17, my brother Bob led me to the Lord. I trust that you'll realize that this is the greatest decision you will ever make. You know why? Because it involves eternity. We're all going there, and you can know for sure that you will go to be with him if you have him in your heart. So as Dr. Williams leads us in a word of prayer, accepting Jesus as Savior, or maybe you've strayed away and you want to come back to him. Maybe there are things in your life you don't want there anymore. You want to really live for him. Pray that prayer too as he leads us right now. Dr. Williams. Just one moment of God's grace can erase a whole lifetime of disgrace. And whatever disgrace you've had, whatever tangled up mess you have, bring it to Jesus now. And pray this. You don't have to understand it, but just pray this and believe it. This is what I call a miracle prayer. Let's bow our heads and hearts and say this with me. Dear God, I come to you in the name of your son, Jesus. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me, and I believe he was raised from the dead. I'm sorry for all my sins and ask you to forgive me. Come into my life, Jesus, and be my Lord and be my Savior. And I thank you. I'm saved, I'm forgiven, and I now have a home in heaven. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? How wonderful it is to open our heart to the Lord and know that we're ready for eternity because he's forgiven us of our sins. Well, there's my address. Please write to me. I'd love to send you this little book of first steps in a what? New, New direction. direction. He's going to be walking with you every moment of your life now. He'll direct you if you only look to him. And now, friends, oh, like I said, if there's ever an offer I wanted you to have, it's this one. Eternity, who, where, when, and why. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck. Thank you, Rex Ella, my friend, to order Eternity, who, where, when, why. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jock Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jock Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Seller. Thank you so very much, Chuck. And I want to say, don't put it off. Eternity. Really, so many people don't know where they're going. And they can know if you'll show them this video because the answers are on here. 800 number, there's the address. Please make the call right away. You know, there's so many people who really are down today. I've noticed that everywhere I go. I want to leave you with this wonderful, wonderful thought. You're never so high as when you are on your knees. How good to be connected with the Lord. He'll lift you up. Looking forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.